Hello and welcome. I'm the Code Pilot. That's enough about me. I want to hear from you. Head down to the comments section and say hi, and maybe tell me about your Pi game project. Obviously, you want to know a bit about Collision, and in this episode, which is part of the Collision series, you'll see how we can use distance between two points to determine if a collision has occurred. But before we get heads down into the code, let's see what the fruits of our labour will bring. So we have two circles, one static in the middle of the display surface and the other controlled by the mouse. If they collide, the static circle turns red. We'll also be applying the same collision technique to sprites and then look into a quick and easy method of adjusting the sensitivity of detection. And remember, all scripts featured in these vids are available on my Google Drive. So open the description, click the link, download and join me for some quick coding action. So you may have noticed the warning at the bottom of the browser. Don't worry, it's just Chrome. It thinks that all Python scripts are going to blow up your computer. My advice, open it in Notepad++ first and see if there's anything horrible in it. Right, so let's code. We need to define some more colours because we can't run this with just black and white. So we'll add red, green and blue. Though to be honest, I don't even know why I've added blue. It's not even used in the script. I think it's one of those moments where I got overexcited and went mad. Next, we'll need to define variables to position and draw our circles. The x and y coordinate, the radius and the colour. The location of this circle will be in the centre of the display surface and we'll have a radius of 50 pixels. We don't need to define the colour yet because we'll assign it when we determine if there's a collision or not. This circle's coordinates will be set by the position of the mouse cursor. It'll also have a radius of 50 pixels and will be white. The x and y values are set to none because we haven't got the location of the mouse yet. Well, that's the setup done. Let's delve into the main loop. One of our two circles will be drawn at the mouse position, which means we'll need to call Pygame's mouse get pos function to get the values. The get pos function returns a tuple containing a mouse's x and y coordinates. And to make it easier to work with, we'll split them into individual variables x2 and y2. This line here is the workhorse of this collision detection method and calculates the distance between two points using Pythagoras' theorem. If you'd like to learn more on distance, can I suggest watching this video called Distance and Direction? It'll go into more detail about how this works with some fancy pantsy graphics. So, the variable distance now contains the distance between our two circles, one in the centre of the display surface and the other at the mouse position. Now we need to test for collision. This is done by adding the two circles radiuses together and comparing the result against the distance. If distance is less or equal to the sum of radius 1 plus radius 2, then a collision has occurred. Let's take a look at this clip for a visual representation. The vertical arrows show the value of the circle's radius and the arrow between the two circles shows the distance. The sum of radius 1 plus radius 2 is 450. And you'll see as soon as the distance between the two circles drops below 450, it'll trigger the collision. The script for that demonstration is also available to download for you to play about with. OK, so the next line of code assumes that there has been a collision, so we need to change the colour of circle 1. That's the one in the centre of the display surface. And if no collision has taken place, then colour it green. And the last thing we need to do is draw the circles to the display. I'm going to speed this bit up a bit because we've covered Pygame's draw functions before, but click the link above if you need a refresh. Right, that's it, me little beauties. Let's run this mother and see what happens. Phew, no errors this time. As we bring the mouse over to the circle in the centre, the distance gets smaller. If the distance is less than the two circles combined radius, then it triggers a collision. Pretty easy code, isn't it? I'll show you something that you can do with this code that's fun. I've put this little script together for you to play around with if you want to. I'm not going to go into the code now, but you can download it with the others so all is good. Have fun with it. Circles are great, but how many games just use circles? So I guess we need to cover applying this collision method to sprites too. We can use this script, but just make a few minor changes like loading in images and blitting to the display surface. So let's crack on. 
So as I mentioned just a second ago, we need to load in some images, three to be precise, and this is what they look like. For the purpose of the script though, we'll call them stars. They're not really stars, they're more like squashed hedgehogs, but typing squashed hedgehogs as a variable name each time would be a real drag. So, stars it is. I can't really say much more on this, so I'll just speed it up a bit. And next we need to define a value that represents the radius of the sprite. Using circles is easy because you can't define a circle without a radius, so what we'll do for the sprite is use half the sprite's width. We can get this value by calling the getRec function available from any instance of a surface, including images. The getRec function returns an array called center, and the value at index 0 is half the image's width. Index 1 is half the image's height. Okay, so let's change the value of the radius 1 and 2 variables to star radius that we just calculated above and change the color value in color 2 to the white star image. Anyone like cats or dogs? They're so cute. Sorry, I just needed a distraction while I corrected a typo. Did it work? Of course it did. Who can resist those furry little guys? Nah. Well, that's the setup done, so let's go into the main loop and make the changes there. We're basically swapping the color variables for the corresponding image variables and changing the circle function into the blip function. Separate versions of this script are available by the way, the version with the drawing and the version with the blitting, just in case something goes wrong and you need a backup. I'm just going to comment this bit and speed up the typing of the blip functions. Click the linky thing in the corner if you need to know anything about blitting. Okay, that's the conversion from drawing to blitting done. Let's jump over to the command prompt and get this script rolling. Like before, when the distance between the two sprites is less than their combined radius, we have a collision. But because sprites aren't perfectly round like a circle, the imperfections can cause it to trigger a collision when no physical collision has taken place. A way around this is to reduce the radius value of the sprites so they have to be closer before triggering a collision. Let's go back to the code and I'll show you what I mean. If we wanted to reduce the radius of the sprites by 25%, we can turn 25% into a decimal, 0.25, and multiply the radius value by 1 minus 0.25, which is 0.75. So in real terms, if a sprite has a radius of 50 pixels, and we multiply that by 0.75, the new radius is 37.5 pixels. This means the sprite will have to get significantly closer to another sprite before triggering a collision. Let's run the script and have a look at the difference that makes now. So as you can see now, the sprite at the mouse position has to get closer before the star in the center of the display turns red. However, we can see here that even when the stars are touching, it doesn't trigger the collision. So in conclusion, the distance method is a compromise between sprite shape and detection. The more circle-like the sprite, the better. This method of detection could be useful for triggering a switch in a game, or being close enough to a door to go through it. Well, that's it coders, the end of another video. Please say hi in the comments, and feel free to download the scripts and images featured in this video. Links below. See you next time.